But didn't Randy and Wade have a Kaibab tags last year? Yeah, maybe Wade did or something. Are you recording or are you just holding that camera acting like you're... Oh, it's definitely like framed, recording, lighting's what on you point. What me right now? I just want early morning shots, dude. You're always asking for Some them. Some B-roll. B-roll of me you? eating chicken for 20 minutes. Yeah. No cuckoo? Came to our little squirrel spot because we've seen coos deer in this little canyon every time we've drove by, except for today. So we're gonna go to plan B, which is trying to figure that out. Yonder the Fonda in the bowl. Jane Fonda. This giant little thousand coos deer. Let's talk about Jane Fonda. Hey guys, so here we are sitting. In the pickup. It's day number what? Five? Day five of pretty much glassing all day long trying to find these little gray ghosts and uh, we finally found some. We got them. Hey Brian, you can go put a stock on them. Is it a buck? I don't know. Good. Hey guys, day five here chasing these gray ghosts out in the deserts of Arizona. If you guys want, you guys can come do this too. It's over the counter public land. What an awesome opportunity to get out and really hone your bow hunting skills on some of the most cagey creatures we've ever experienced here on the Hush Channel. <laughs> He's a booner, dude. He's really big. Finally turned up a nice, nice buck. One of the better ones we've seen, probably. Kind of just hanging right off the back end of a doe, out on this big open face. Now we have to figure out, is it in a position that we could even attempt to stalk? Not a lot of cover on this hillside. So we'll probably sit here and watch them for a little bit. In case you know, we're talking earlier, we kind of are liking the lower country a little bit better, just because it's better suited to put a stock on a deer like with a buck that Casey stocked yesterday was in a much better place than where this guy is. It'll just be about the angle once you get up there if you have an angle from that knob. That, that's the way I'd go but... Oh there's the doe. Okay. Just remember that tree it's gonna be hard but remember... It's pretty knob, much just down off that little nipple. Yeah knob, bunch of trees, single tree, single tree, doe, this side and then the buck even further. Okay. But I'm gonna come right here, park the truck back there with and just sit and watch with the spotter. Guys, this is like I feel like our first opportunity at a stockable coos deer. And, uh, pretty much every buck we've seen has been chasing a doe and running over the tops of the ridges and we've tried to get in front of them. But this buck, we got lucky and literally found him two minutes before he bedded down because these deer are this tall. The grass is this tall. It's very tough to spot them when they're bedded, but we saw him when he was up and then watched him and his doe bed. And so I think we have a really good shot at this deer. I think Brian is gonna execute the plan that we came up with and we're gonna be having coos deer back straps tonight. No pressure, there's no pressure. We do have a lot of time, so we're gonna be patient, assuming they stay put. I'd say the challenge is there's not a ton of cover wind right now. The ground's really, really dry. And if there's no cover wind, it's going to be super hard. I've got a pair of socks I'll throw on if I make it close enough. Logan and I have to hike up this big hill. And then we've got a traverse side hill. We took some photos of where they bedded. Kind of tried to make metal notes of where they are. They're going to be facing away from the direction we're coming. So we'll see. It's going to be fun. Join us on the stock. Wish us luck. Well guys, I just walked through that fence, this gate, and uh, that is the boundary between private land and the house we're staying at, and public land. I'm going to head out here, try to make a couple coyote stands. And typically, uh, at least from what I've done, you're not, you, you're not typically hiking around making coyote stands. You're usually driving, make a stand, drive about a mile or two, make another stand, but I don't have a truck, so I'm just out here, head in this direction. 
right here. Looking for coyotes. Always, always keeping my eye out for shed antlers out here and seeing if we can't pull on any predators today. Uh, the other guys are out hunting deer. I'm not sure if they're having any luck. The service out here is really spotty, but just made sure to mark the place on my Onyx map so I don't get lost. And now it's time to go see if we can't make a stand or two and see if we can get something to come in. I'll do my best to film whatever I can, but we're gonna go on a little adventure. Should be fun. Here we go. I was about to uh, make a stand and all of a sudden I see a guy and a dog and a horse. Just trying to see which direction they go so I can let them pass through and then I'll make a stand. Well, dang it. Got a shot at a coyote. But I didn't call it in. It was running on the ridge ahead of me, kind of right where these the guy and the horse came through. <sighs> he was working his way away, barked at him shot low like he was he's literally over in the exact spot i wanted to go call from so now i don't know which way to go i'm sure he's spooked as heck oh well hey i mean that's what we came out here for to try to get a coyote finally finally saw one it's the first one i've seen on the trip um not just calling but seen in general at all so that was cool oh well we'll just keep walking I'll make a stand when it feels right see if we can't get one to come in and call I probably shouldn't have shot and maybe gone over there and did a stand. I got a little excited. <laughs> we'll see if we can turn one up up here anyways. Oh, well, bumped a doe out of her bed. Hopefully that doesn't screw up the deer that we have bedded. But we didn't see this doe up here. Got to like 10 yards of her. So I'm just going to sit back and watch the show. Um, I'm set up where I can see the deer. I can see Brian and Logan stalking in. And I told Brian, I said, the only hand signal I'll give you, if I'm waving my hands like that, that means that means the buck has uh, got up and walked away or, or blown out of there. So um, I can still see the doe right now. That is, I can't see the buck, but I, he's just tucked away under this bush. But it looks like Brian and Logan are about mm -hmm. 300 yards away from him. But uh, I wish the wind would pick up, give them a little more cover, cover sound. But they're literally, we're calling it the eye in the sky, but it's this border patrol that has this giant camera rig set up up on top. And it's literally 200 yards away from where these deer are. But yesterday it was running off a generator and it was pretty noisy so hopefully maybe they'll kick that thing on too i don't know we're looking for anything we can get at this point but yeah i'm just gonna sit back and try to film it from afar and uh have i have a good feeling about this brian is out of the three of us he's by far the most patient one and i told brian i said be extra brian on this stock you'll you have plenty of time just be patient and take your time and uh don't push the envelope too hard you'll probably get a shot so see what happens Alright guys, here's our new plan. So, what we kind of thought could happen, ended up happening. The doe just got up out of her bed, started feeding, and kind of fed over this saddle. We expected that to happen just because it's a big open face right here. And on the back side of the saddle is all timbered, treed with this oak. Chances are they're going to bed there. So, we're going to have Casey loop, or loop around and try to bump him back over to us. I'm gonna try to get set up down here, see if we can get him. So, this uh, this was gonna be a challenge regardless, just because how open it is. But I think uh, sometimes you gotta get creative with these little buggers. Hopefully, this works. So that's Casey's truck. He's gonna drive that road. See if he can push the deer over that side, over the saddle, right into Brian's lap. That's the plan anyways. 
Well, I just uh, shot my first coyote on a stand right here. You want to know what's crazy is that I would put money on it. That's the dog I shot at back there. I decided to walk up the draw to kind of just get into some new country and he came from that same direction but he hit my wind right there past my barrel and ran just through a little wash i barked at him stopped him and hit him except uh he did run off so i'm gonna have to go over there and track him but i think i hit him just a little back if i had to guess but that was pretty cool he came in dang close but he hit my wind and flipped i was lucky to even stop him to get a shot off but i was digging this spot this spot is really cool that dog is like really, really golden brown. Looks like the same one I shot at and missed back there. I was able to pull him out of the draw that he ran to. <laughs> that was cool. <sighs> Let things calm down and then I'm gonna go, go track him. Got him with the 257. It's turned out to be a pretty sweet gun. That's right where he was standing. I was up on that hill. The call was down just a little bit lower and he came in on minute 12 so typically i'm just passing off what i've learned through my friends um sit the stand 20 minutes he came in on 12 and i i think the fox came in on about 10 to 12 too so seems to kind of be the sweet spot so far for me is at 10 to 15 minutes but i gotta track him there's some blood i know he made a big loop around here well right where i last saw him going to these mesquite trees or whatever these little trees are he's piled up right there look how golden he is is that cool or what he is so much different than the coyotes i've shot before he's like a golden brown i'm almost positive this is the dog that i shot at back there because he was this same color really tan first coyote that i've ever successfully gotten on my own stand Pretty cool. What a coat on this one, too. Yeah, hit him a little back like I thought, but mid-body. Definitely enough to do the job. Shot him with that 257. Let's pull him out of here. Make sure he's dead. Kind of quartered away. Looks like I hit him on this side and it exited out that side. Ah, pretty dog. Yeah, guys, so this is my first desert coyote from Arizona pretty fun little critters to hunt all you need is a basic hunting license it didn't do a lot of damage on the in uh, where it entered but the exit blew a pretty big hole in him I still like to skin him out keep his hide super pretty a little chunk of him missing there but cool animals cool animals man I bet these things do a number on the coos deer especially when they're fawning but uh, we're right by the ranches, which is crazy. I just walked out of the house like I showed you guys. A lot of ranch properties down there and whatnot. I didn't think I'd have any luck to kind of this close to town because I figured it had been called so much. But sometimes you just got to go give it a try. As you can see, it works. <laughs> that was crazy. This thing is dirty. Okay, guys, I've got the coyote kind of hanging out right here for now. I'm going to try to go get another stand in maybe two if I can. I'm gonna have to walk a little ways, so I just dropped a pin on Onyx map of right here because I do wanna get back to the house or on the way back to the house, grab the dog. I'm gonna need some rope or string to drag him because that or throw him over my shoulders or something because he's pretty heavy and uh, the house isn't too far away. Matter of fact, I do have the Onyx. Let's see how far we've walked so far. It's been an hour and 15 minutes and I've only made one stand. That's not the most efficient hunting for coyotes but uh we're 1.1 miles in so i'm gonna post that up right there go see if we can't make another stand and try to get another one hey guys we are crushing goals today absolutely crushing goals i wanted to find a coos deer shed so bad on this trip and i wanted to call on my first predator got that done and now we have a coos deer shed unfortunately it is a little old but we've got one Found a freaking coos deer shed on the trip. Ah, oh, that's awesome. It's not far from where the dog is, so I might just post it up here and get them both on the way back. But check it out. <laughs> that's cool. I know it's not much, especially since it's chalk, but it's my uh, first one on this trip. I have found coos deer sheds 
before so it's not like it's the first one ever but just wanted to find one on this trip really bad and as much as i've been walking around i figured i ought to be able to turn one up sure enough we just did it's literally just a cat and mouse game I haven't found the big one again since he fed over the snob. Found a different buck though, smaller, chasing two does. For no apparent reason, they just split. But they're in a really perfect little saddle. So Casey's gonna go get set up over there. Logan and I are gonna climb this mountain, try to loop around, see if we can just work towards each other. Spotting and stalking in this stuff has proven to be Pretty difficult. The guys that killed in camp, Ryan Lampers and Brian Call, kind of were still hunting. So it's just set up in a really good area where bucks were chasing does and they were just super patient. And eventually, a doe came by, buck followed, and they were able to shoot it. And I think that is going to be the ticket. What we've noticed though is if you can find bucks that are chasing does and then have like a decent area to set up, those are the two components that seem to make the most sense. So where Casey's headed is a good spot. We just saw a buck chasing a couple does there, and it's a natural little funnel in this deep country, so an easy saddle for them to cross over. Yeah, so we're just gonna try to work together, bump deer maybe back and forth, um, if necessary, and it's the right situation. I got a grunt tube that has worked so far this trip. Just talked to Aaron at the hunting public. He and Greg are on a really nice mule deer buck, which is cool here. They got the desert muleys, which they look different than like the traditional normal mule deer that we've hunted. Got the really pretty, like white tips on their ears. Capes are real pretty. So they're on muleys. We're on coos deer. And then that's what's so cool here. You can kind of just chase almost anything. But dang near everything is open. But it's kind of fun because you can just mix it up. If you get tired of chasing deer, getting your butt kicked on the mountain, drive around and try to shoot rabbits or have lena or whatever. So it's been a fun week with a lot of good folks and I'm gonna keep on chasing these little buggers around. It definitely is a good place to come and practice just because it's such a target rich environment with critters everywhere. Gives you a chance to go on a lot of different stocks. Gives you a chance to work on your glassing skills because they're hard to find. So kind of a little off season uh, way to improve all your skills and enjoy this super pretty weather. Okay, Casey's in his spot. So now we hike. Let's go see if we can make some magic happen. All right, this is looking like a pretty good spot other than the road but I like this canyon nice deep wash down it that goes down to some thick brush might be able to pull something out of here might just tuck in right there by that brush I'll set this out here I'm gonna put it up so it's elevated get that sound out there really good I'm gonna pull back to that brush patch we'll set up and see if we can get one set up right here Minute 12 again. That one I shot from quite a ways away because he was about to duck behind this draw that I wouldn't be able to see him. But uh, I caught him coming up on the other side of the road, popped up, saw his head, looking this way. I just m slowly, slowly moved to get my gun ready. Then he disappeared. He had crossed a wash and then up the other side over here. And he's standing there broadside, I don't know, 250 yards away thumped him and dropped him right there in his tracks and now there's three moo cows i don't know if you guys could see these white moo cows right here they're just over there staring at him so another good kill another clean quick kill on the 12th minute i know a lot of well, i guess i shouldn't say i know but just judging by videos a lot of coyote hunters they seem to really enjoy getting them as close to the call as possible which i would be all about too but that thing was about to go behind the ridge right here where I wouldn't see him so he was standing there broadside he was stopped I decided to take take the shot felt really good on this bog pod and uh, dumped him and got our second coyote on the 12th minute again that's crazy let's check the onyx tracker so when we drive we typically walk a mile in between the stands and last I checked I was at we're at 1.56 miles so we were at one mile before so we're only about half a mile over the ridge to where I got that one so pretty fun doing it the hiking style I like it I like it a lot wonder where he came from he must have been somewhere over here because he was working that way 
see those white cows? He didn't look as brown as that last one. A little more gray on his head and kind of brown ears and grayish brown back, but we got number two. All right. Should be right at the top of this. All right, guys. Here's the second dog. Not as golden as that last one, but still another pretty one. Similar, similar in size. I'd say this one's a little smaller. Man, I'm looking at where I was sitting. I wish I had a rangefinder. It's quite a ways over there. Probably more like 300 yards, and uh, the one shot dumped him. So, luckily, this one's right by a two-track road. I think I'm just going to drag him to the road, drop a pin on Onyx, and that way later tonight I can just make make some circles and pick these dogs up because if this one I'd like to skin it too see what we can do with this with the hide such a cool animal came in it was really cautious though it definitely wasn't what they would call a hard charger he was taking his time and really double checking everything making sure it was safe before he came in but if I can get this one to the road I might be able to make one more stand on my way out but it's about to get dark as you can see we don't have a ton of daylight left but there we go two for two on the coyotes today wish i had somebody to help me film that'll make a great hide i'll probably like slit this one up the stomach then out the legs and do like a tan it flat i think would be pretty cool for like a tabletop or something uh, sounds like we got some trucks moving everyone's probably getting after it for the evening hunt blasting for deer so we'll gather the goods and we'll get out of here. Well guys, we're just gonna keep putting the pressure on them. That's all we can do. Hopefully they'll make a mistake at one time, but excuse deer hunting's tough. But I'm not kidding, I said it earlier. If there's no, I don't think there's a better way in the quote unquote off season to hone your archery skills, your glassing skills, stocking skills, all the above than coming down here to Arizona because it's really the only thing that you have able to do right now at this time of year. And like I said, these animals are cagey and they're smart and uh, it will really test you, but I think it, you'll be a better hunter afterwards. Hopefully, hopefully you still want to hunt after you get done chasing these dumb things around. All right guys, here's stand number three. <clears throat> I can't say I love this spot, but kind of wanted to get up in the hills and, and try to call one out of these canyons. So here's what it looks like. It's open except for this bottom. So if something comes tearing up the bottom, like right there, it's gonna be hard to see him. I got the call down there in a tree. I'm gonna hit the button and uh, give it 20 minutes, see if we can turn something up. So far I'm 100% today, two for two. Let's make it three. Well, stand three, I gave it 15 minutes. Kinda knew I had to hurry to make a fourth stand. So I cut it to 15 minutes. Ow. Everything tries to grab you out here. And now I'm just gonna head out into this flatter country, trying to make one last stand before it gets dark, but just enjoying this afternoon hike and out here putting on some miles calling in some coyotes and watching a lot of deer i've actually seen a handful of deer typically i turn on the call and spook them out of the draws but it's fun to watch them anyways but if i get off to this edge and see a good vantage point i'll probably make one more stand before it gets dark because there's not a lot of time left How about that? An awesome desert sunset. Guys, stand four did not produce anything. And as you can see, it's about to get dark. But I feel like I gave it my all on this little jaunt, hiking and uh, you know searching out good stand locations by using the strategies and things I've been taught and told from my buddies. So worked out pretty good. Heck, the first two. Like I said earlier, we were 100% on the first two stands. And then, of course, the third one and fourth one knocked it down to 50%. Still pretty dang good, especially since I literally walked out of the backyard of the house we're staying at. 
So I'm happy with that. Got to uh, enjoy some fresh air. Unfortunately, not some fresh terrain. Guys, there is so much garbage out here from all the immigrants. Like water bottles and clothing and shoes and a whole bunch of junk. But uh, this place is a really cool place. Southern Arizona desert. Today was probably 65 degrees. It felt felt awesome. And I'm just sitting sitting there and I'm not even cold and it's almost dark. So not going to catch me complaining about that. Great way to spend a week in January. So heading back to the ranch house. Catch up with those guys. Swap stories and get some dinner. Whew. Well, made it back to the road with the dog. Logan's on his way down here. Uh, tough little hike for how short it was. I was trying to do my best not to drag the coyote too much because I didn't want to ruin the fur. So I think some of the fur on the side I was dragging kind of got ripped off. You know, not big time, but just shortened. But uh, here it is, dog number two. That's a good looking one. Yeah, he's really gold. He's cool. I'm yeah, excited to skin him. The browns are really popping. Let's get him in the back and get loaded up. Skinning out my coyote. This is the second one? This is still the first one, dude. Oh my gosh. I don't have a tail stripper, so I'm it's like... Come eat. Oh, you got a tail stripper? Yeah. You know how to do them? <laughs> I used to split them up there. Yeah, I'm split, but man, you should see the, the tool that Mike has. He just takes his tool. Yeah. So that's where I screwed up on my fox. I'm trying not to do that anymore. So that's what I'm doing, guys. I shot these two coyotes. I feel like it's my duty to take something from them. So I'm going to take the fur and tan them and use them for decoration around my living room, basically, my barnwood wall. Both are pretty dogs. Uh, so I'm going to skin them both out. But it's a little bit of work because I don't know what I'm doing. And I know they have a tool to take these off really quickly and nice and clean. I don't have that so I'm just going inch by inch and trying not to ruin it because I ruined my fox uh, trying to be a little aggressive on it so it's gonna take my time on this tail make sure I don't cut off. Alright guys hope you enjoyed another day out here in Arizona sounds like these guys got on some deer this morning and throughout the day and I was out going on an adventure hike and calling in predators so all in all a great day hope you guys enjoyed it tomorrow we're leaving this place so i don't know if we'll make a video or not but uh if not hope you guys enjoyed this little mini series hunting and adventuring out in arizona great place a lot of public land and a lot of opportunity to come hunt out here and uh, i think you guys should check it out especially a lot of you guys from back home you have nothing else to do in the middle of winter it's freezing cold come down here at 60 70 degrees and and enjoy the great outdoors. So, thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll keep these videos coming.